Hey, how's it going? It's Keith Townsend. You're watching coverage of VMware Explorer 2022 here in beautiful Barcelona, Spain. Every time I say Barcelona, I want to make some type of uh, of, of gesture and he scores. <laughs> this is football <laughs> capital is Europe in general, but Barcelona, I just hear about the teams here more than any place else. I have the pleasure of interviewing uh, this is going to be an interesting conversation, Joe, because you've hosted the CTO Advisor Studio before, mm -hmm. at VMworld actually, Correct. a few years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we've both done the Cube together, so it's, it's not a really an interview, more than a conversation. Joe Pisker, yes. uh, founder of your own independent CTO Advisor and analyst firm, you wanted to talk to me about platform engineering today. Yeah, no, correct. I mean, platform engineering is a topic that I think is just super interesting. Um, you know, I, I host DevOps Days, I'm one of the organizers back in the Netherlands. I host one in Amsterdam, one in Eindhoven. Um, and lately we've been having the discussion with that whole group, you know, is DevOps still relevant? Because we keep hearing about, you know, platform engineering. Right. And so platform engineering is a topic that I think deserves attention, especially at a show like this. You know, this is still, for me, the Emerald, this is still about, you know, an industry conference. And so the ways we work, the teams we engage in IT, they matter to me. And so the discussion around what is platform engineering? Is it relevant? What do we do with it? How do we see it in the show here this week? Those are all just interesting topics to me. So I went to my first DevOps days in Chicago a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. uh, fascinating uh, group. I think it does need to be addressed, like what, what version of DevOps are we talking about? Because yeah. there's like different layers. Yeah of DevOps, yeah. what, when we say DevOps, what are we talking about for this I mean, there, there are so many different interpretations of it, right? There's a very narrow, technology-minded one, you know, we're talking about CI, CD, and tooling, and, and stuff like that. That is not necessarily DevOps to me. DevOps to me is, we have these two groups, and they have to work together. DevOps is all about collaboration, is all about reducing handovers between two teams, is all about fostering communication between the teams so that we can actually deliver something as IT together to produce value, to you know, get something to the customer, uh, whether that be an external customer or the internal customer. So DevOps to me, uh, and that's also what DevOps Days is all about, is about collaboration. It is about figuring out together how to do this whole IT thing. And, and I think one of the things that uh, when people use the term DevOps, they think specifically of developers and operations, and in the enterprise, we know that those terms are not as rigid. It's no. A little bit used. You know, you have app owners, you have infrastructure, and it's kind of that idea of those groups coming together to yeah. collaborate. So we can't. You can't buy yourself a DevOps. Oh no. You have to. It, it is a culture change, right. and it's about how you operate. Well, you, you, you cannot buy it, but I can sure as hell try and sell it to you. I can, I can sell, which, I can, yeah, two different things. You can't buy it, but I can, I can yeah. try and sell it. <laughs> we are the, we're at a conference that there's probably a half a dozen oh, yeah. vendors on the floor that yeah. will sell, you, they'll try and sell you a DevOps. Oh yeah, yeah. All right, so platform engineering. Yeah, I mean platform engineering kind of is, I don't know, the next iteration of trying to solve this problem, right? So one of the things that always kind of irked me with the term DevOps is there's no infrastructure in that work. It's not, you know, dev, infra, ops, or whatever, some kind of version of that. And so we, we kind of uh, forgot about infrastructure, uh, and rightly so, because cloud took away most of that pain. Um, but now we're dealing with, you know, basically three things, and then it became four things, because security suddenly became a thing. And so it's kind of very ambiguous what it is, and that's interesting um, in, in terms of platform engineering, because it isn't as rigid, urgently uh, attached to developers and operations. It is all of those things. It's also about resilience, it's also about security, it's also about you know, making sure your developers or any other group that uses IT within your company can work quickly, successfully, you know, efficiently, and all those other terms describing how to work. Um, and so platform engineering to me is kind of the next iteration or maybe even a superset of what DevOps was supposed to be. Hmm because we're kind of going back to the drawing board saying, hey, we want to develop, we need to build something, we need to create something, we also need to run that, we also need to operate that, it also needs to be available, secure, resilient, et cetera. And so platform engineering kind of embodies the next 
you know, way we think about how to do all of these things, where we build something internally, a platform, and I don't care if that's an internal developer platform or an IS platform or a platform as a service, you know, PaaS platform. It's about the idea that we need to standardize the stuff that we need to do our daily job. You know, me, I, I use this laptop. Um, I don't go and build my own email service. I buy it from Google. And platform engineering kind of has that same embodiment where we treat all of the things that we need to have to do our job as a platform, as a service. So we build something, we put in all of the stuff that we need, and now our developers, our internal IT teams can use those things independently from operations, independently from infrastructure to deliver whatever it is they need to deliver. Maybe so that's an application. I can easily conflate that. We're Again, we're at VMware Explorer, so I can say, hey, tap, Tanzu application platform. Did I just buy my way into having a platform team? Well, I mean, you'll buy a product, Right. But like we jokingly said, mm -hmm. I can try and sell you some DevOps. Um, and I'm not you know, trying to say that TAP is, uh, has no value, but it's, it's, it's only... Not, it's just a product, it's it a is, tool. And it is just a piece of that larger puzzle because you need to successfully adopt the product within your company, but then also you need to successfully have other teams adopt your pro platform. And that is not something a product can do for you. So I was uh, on LinkedIn and somebody uh, they tagged me in this video that Walmart put out yeah. that talked about their trip, uh, triplet process. I'm not sure what that is. I got to look that up. Yeah. Uh, it's on my to-do list. But more importantly, Walmart talked about their cloud. Mm -hmm. Their internal cloud that allows them to do multi-cloud from the different cloud providers yeah. and their private infrastructure. And one of the things that really struck me was that that cloud mm -hmm. is built on OpenStack. And there's this premise, I, I don't know if it's a premise or perception, yeah. right or wrong, that you need Kubernetes to build a platform team. And I think what Walmart is showing is that it's not, they absolutely have a platform team, but what they're showing is that the job of the platform team isn't to implement a specific technology, Correct. but to your point, to be that clearinghouse for making developers, application owners, and even infrastructure folks jobs, I don't know if it's necessarily easier, but achievable. Achievable and repeatable and consistent. So one of the things I used to work at a supermarket and we had this challenge where we had, I don't know, 50 different development teams using 50 different technology stacks. And then security came around and said, hey, um, we need you to be compliant to this standard and I had to go to each of those teams and figure out how compliant were they. What things did they need to improve? And so by having a platform, you kind of front load that work in, into the platform and you say, this is our standard, these are the security practices that we preach and that we adhere to, or these are, I don't know, the templates or the ways, the standardized ways of working, like this is our pipeline. And you have templates, you have that scaffolding in place so that teams don't necessarily need to think about all that stuff that they don't care about, like security, like setting up observability, like setting up data protection, all that stuff. So it, it's nice when you have a single platform to wrap that around, but both of you, both of you and I have worked in enterprise IT for decades, and we know most places are not that clean. They are. Like there's still SAP running on HPUX. Yeah. There's still some DAX systems. There's still applications actively being developed on mainframe. There's some cloud stuff. There's some VM stuff. There's yeah. now Kubernetes stuff. How should CTOs, CIOs approach the concept of platform teams? Should they look to deploy platform teams for net new platforms? Or should it be a more holistic view of, you know, how do we do this entire process or right. across different solutions, yeah. platforms. Yeah, I mean it's definitely the latter because I don't think a single platform will ever work. Um, it's kind of the same way that we think about multi-cloud, right? Multi-cloud is not something that you actively think uh, and decide to do. Multi-cloud is something that just happens to you because of M&As, because of different teams having you know, different historical uh, preferences. Uh, maybe it's because one single cloud does one thing very well and you need that specific feature. So 
you know, multi-cloud kind of happens, and running applications on multiple platforms for the same reasons also happen. And so, um, it's not about the runtime itself. It's not about, you know, we need to run everything on this, you know, cluster, or group of clusters, cloud, whatever. It's about setting a standard, how to work securely, compliant, consistently repeatable across all of those. And so platform engineering to me is much more about the way you work and the standards you set and then encapsulating that into something that is easily consumable by your internal or external customer. So the, we, I know we've gotten to this debate on the tech field, the uh, Slack channel. I think me and you are of like mind, so it's going to be tough to, to look at this objectively, but is this a real thing that's happening? Is the pushback that I've seen. So I, I'll pay the devil's advocate. Platform engineering is something that vendors made up to sell a platform like Tap or yeah. OpenShift or et cetera. Customers are not really doing platform engineering. Right, I mean, and again, this all depends on the definition and kind of how you look at the problem. And I think doing OpenShift or doing roll your own Kubernetes or doing Tap, that all makes sense for a piece of the puzzle. Platform engineering should be, I think, again, not something a vendor here on the show floor will push to us, but it should be something that they advocate um, in terms of this is how the industry should work together. Um, and, and again, it, it's much less about a single product from one of the vendors here that you can buy, but it's much more about figuring out how platform engineering as a practice should land within your organization. Um, and you know, I'm a technologist by heart. I was trained as an engineer, uh, but I learned very quickly that technology is as useful as the adoption rate within the enterprise. And that is, I think, kind of the next iteration of platform engineering, if you look at it from that you know, DevOps angle, is how do we make sure teams work in the same way, use the same tools, use the same ways of work, so that we're consistent, uh, you know, repeatable, using all of the security compliance features that we need to use. Um, so it's much less a technology discussion, you know, should we use OpenShift or TAP or whatever, uh, and much more about, okay, we have a specific use case for, I don't know, running SAP on uh, on a bare metal cloud somewhere, and can we make that process of deploying, updating, operating that system repeatable and consistent? Yeah, so as I think about some of the concept and some of the challenges that I've had over my career, and uh, it's usually around collaboration. It is. So if the SAP basis team, wants, which is the equivalent of the app team or app development team, if they want to lay down a new version or a new landscape for test and dev, typically that interaction between the infrastructure team and the basis team may not always be prescribed. Yeah. It may not always be smooth. It's definitely not repeatable. Oh, no. So how does the platform team come in and help that Help, help fix that. And I think we can take a lot of lessons from Kubernetes, mm -hmm. OpenStack, the cloud. You're big, you're big in uh, consulting in the HashiCorp mm -hmm. world with Terraform. And taking these concepts, even if you can't take the tools, I think the concepts work beyond oh, the yeah. tooling yeah. itself. And now you can set up, you know, it may not today be automated, but the interface is the same. The basics team can come, app team can come to the infrastructure team and ask for a thing in a certain way so that and it's well defined so we all know what we're asking for and getting. Yeah, well I mean a lot of it comes down to, I think the analogy with um, kind of the, the, the cloud principles, that works. Um, and specifically having something that is um, self-service and on demand and so thinking about the way you work, not as something, hey, I can help you and you have to wait for me, like, you're an app dev, I'm an infrastructure guy, you file a support ticket with me, you have to wait three weeks, I do work, and then you can go on with whatever you're doing. That is synchronous, waiting for each other, that doesn't make sense. And platform engineering, at least the promise of it, um, will make sure that the thing you need is available to you, on demand, and you don't need me to actually execute that thing or get that thing. And so cloud does that, right? You as an app dev can go into a cloud, provision something that you need, and you don't need anyone. You don't need to talk to anyone, you're not dependent on anyone, you can just do your thing. And so applying those same principles to basically everything we need and do 
within the enterprise IT. I think that's kind of the promise of platform engineering, creating something that is available to you, standardized, consistent, repeatable, with all of the right security controls in place, with all of the right cost controls in place. Um, and so platform engineering kind of has to sit in between the consumers and the providers. And so, you know, cloud can be a provider. Your internal data center team can be a provider. App devs can be a consumer, or uh, app owners can be a consumer. That is up to the enterprise, of course, to kind of define which groups do uh, consume my services, which groups provide those services. Platform engineering has to sit in between making it asynchronously available, on-demand, self-service. So does all this mean that DevOps as a concept is deprecated? I don't think so. No, I mean, uh, it, it will evolve, um, but I think the core tenets of DevOps, you know, collaborating, removing those walls, um, making sure that you have a single shared goal to work towards, I think that's more relevant than ever. And I think the uh, a big change is, and especially in perception, is what gets operated, I think, in the ideal of DevOps is that developers and operators are working together. Those two teams are collaborating to do steady state. Right. I think platform engineering has a, definitely has a role in steady state. They, they, they secure the platform. Yeah. But you can layer uh, DevOps as an operating model on top of platform engineering. I agree. Yeah, uh, yeah. And the platform, can, the platform engineering team can be responsible for the platform but operating the app in production can still be a collaboration between the yeah, developers yeah, and... Yeah, so, exactly, so the way I think about this is the platform engineering team provide kind of the standards and the way you should operate, but they don't actually operate it for you. They provide all of the scaffolding, all of the tools, all of the, I don't know, documentation, all of the, this is how we do stuff, and then the team that owns an application will develop it and also operate it, but they're helped and supported by the platform engineering team. All right, Joe, did we miss anything in the conversation? I do not think so. So, one of the things I would love to see over the next few months, year, year two, few years, is how platform engineering evolves. DevOps, when we were talking about DevOps seven or eight years ago, has now evolved to something I think we can all pretty much agree upon. I'm wondering if platform engineering will do the same. I don't care what you call it, you can call it platform engineering, you can call it DevOps, you can just call it IT. These problems exist as our platforms get more and more diverse, more and more complicated. We thought cloud would simplify our IT landscape. It has done nothing but make it more complex. Definitely enabled it, but with that enablement has come complexity. If you want to learn more about the CTO Advisor, you can follow us on the web, thectoadvisor.com. Both me and Yo are prolific on the social media platforms, whether it be Twitter or LinkedIn. Please join the conversation. Until then, continue to consume our coverage from VMware Explorer 2022, where we're talking to some of the brightest and best minds in the industry about your challenges delivering these solutions to your internal and external customers. Talk to you soon.